Hi there guys, Neil at Italia Autos here. Welcome back to another episode on the Punto GT. This week we're taking it to the Sandblasters, so we're going to get it to the Sandblasters, get it back, see how bad it is, and hopefully put a little bit of acid etch primer on the bits which have been blasted, and also paint the subframes. So since the last video, I have stripped down the front subframe and I've also, let's go around this side, stripped down the rear subframe. Not too bad at all, to be honest. Everything came out relatively easily. I had one broken bolt for the anti-roll bar, so I'm gonna to have to get that out once it's been blasted. A little bit of heat from the welder and it should hopefully come out. Another thing I've done, I finished cutting off the rest of the sills so the blaster can get in there and do everything as good as possible. So this side is by far the worst, and you'll see around this side now that you've actually got most of the inner sill is still there. So yeah, it's gone at the bottom and at the back here, but most of it is still there. So let's get the trailer hooked up to the Jeep and off to the blasters. I did have a word with them about filming a bit of the blasting, but they said it gets way too dusty. So there's nothing really for me to film there. So let's get over to the blasters and say goodbye to it for a few days. Right, I've just had the phone call to say the Punto is all done. It's eight days later. I've received no pictures, so I'm going in to get this car all blind. When I originally spoke to you guys um, in the last episode, I was unsure as whether I was going to get it blasted or I was going to get it dipped. Um, one of you guys in the comments, well, several of you actually commented, um, but one of you put a link to a video in there and that got my mind thinking after watching that. Um, let's do a little bit of research before I just dive in and spend all that money. Um, and it does turn out that getting it dipped isn't really the best route because if it's not dried out properly or not rinsed off properly, um, it will just start rotting immediately because of the acid left in the sills. Not that there's much lift, look, not that there's much sills left anyway. So I decided to save myself some money, go down the good old-fashioned route of getting it soda blasted. So um, hopefully there is something left of the car. And um, what I'm going to be doing now, getting it back in the unit, finish off removing the engine I was doing before I d dropped tools and ran off to uh, load the trailer up. Um, so yeah, finish removing the engine I was doing on another car um, and then I'm going to be wiping the bodywork over, getting rid of all the bits of sand in the bodywork and um, acid etching the bits that are bare metal so we can then start to get the repair work done. So join me in a few minutes when I shall hopefully be able to have a little look over the shell. Right, we're back with the car now, so let's have a quick look over it and see how bad it is. I have just given it a quick blowout with the airline and started wiping it over so I can start to put some acid etch primer on it. So let's have a look and see what's left. Starting at the front corner, everything isn't too bad under here. There wasn't a problem here anyway. Um, all the rust up here is gone. There was a little bit of rust down there, which is gone. So this is the worst part on the car. And as you can see, there's probably what three, four inches of sill left before that sill would have gone all the way through. The inside of the floor pan isn't too bad. There's not that much got to be cut away. 
of the front part anyway the rear part that'll all get replaced the whole thing will he's done all inside the door shuts for me outsides of the door shuts as well under the rear arches as you see there's quite a lot of work got to be done behind here but it's all fixable this is a part where I wasn't expecting to be much rust but there is so all this is going to have to be replaced there as well Inside the rear arches, all the way along there, back here, it's going to be down there, along the front part there. This is by far the worst side. The boot floor needs several patches, you can see it's gone thin around here and around here and all the way around there, so that needs a fair old chunk doing as well. Big part of the back here has got to be cut out and redone. It's all soft in here as well, so that's all going to have to come off. Again, all inside the rear end, more holes everywhere. But you know, it can all get done. It can all get done without any issues. Well, I say without any issues, with plenty of issues really. Rear floor pan, big chunky hole. They did all inside the engine bay as well. I did tell them not to bother doing that because not that much needed doing, just do this little bit here. But uh, they must have got a little bit carried away and did the whole thing. So I have rubbed some of the inside down now. It is very difficult to get rid of all the dust and stuff that was just left behind. So um, I am going to have to probably retreat it again. But at the minute now, before it starts to rust again, I need to get some primer on the bare metal. And now just a little word from my sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of creative courses and classes taught by experts to help you learn new skills. Anyone can take online classes, watch videos, create projects, and even teach classes themselves. This week I have been watching a few videos by Edouard René. Uh, he does a lot of physics videos, all regarding space, motion and things like that. As I say, I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to planets and space and physics and things like that. So uh, I have been enjoying watching a little bit of that. So please take a look at the links below for a free trial on Skillshare. I would appreciate it if you could take a look and sign up for a free trial. It would help my channel out greatly. So thank you guys for watching this ad for me. When signing up, please use the code ITALIAAUTOS. Been a busy boy for the last few hours now. I've got through 10 cans of acid etch primer. The first stuff I used, the green stuff, I got from my local body shop and they mixed it up for me. And it's basically like water, it's really bad. I was using like a, a can just to do a small area. Um, luckily, my parts guy who'd come around in the van turned up just as I was about to run out of the last can and sold me six cans of uh, really good UPOL acid etch primer. So that's why it's gone from green to black. So the car has actually been up in the air. I've done everything underneath. I have actually run out of UPOL now. Um, so a few areas where I've missed, I've used some of my rust treatment just to keep it all covered over. And then when I get some more on, it's gonna be Monday, we can uh, cover it up a little bit more. But it does appear that this front end has been off at some point. So I think this has had a little bit of a fender bender at some point and somebody's welded a new slam panel on and then it's had another bump so um, yeah i'm going to hopefully get another one of those put on i am a little bit concerned about all the rust at the rear end um mainly up in behind here um it's like all behind here all the way up sort of behind the wing um all the way in there down there there's a big hole up there so it's going to be sort of awkward on places to get in to weld but you know but I've been told, you know, it's all fixable. 
I still think it's all fixable. If I chose my time again, would I do it? I probably wouldn't, but as so many people said, oh, no, you can't do it, it's scrap. It's sort of got my, my back up a little bit, so I've decided, no, no matter what, this car is getting done, especially now I've spent £732 on getting it blasted. I've also treated the front and rear subframe. As I've run out of acid etch primer, this has had a good coat of rust inhibitor uh, all over it, so that shouldn't cause any problems. And then we can put an acid etch on top of that, and then a primer, and then paint it. Uh, the rear sub for front subframe has all been treated, there's no issues there. Just missed a few little bits there where I ran out of um, the green stuff, so I did um, paint that with the rust inhibitor. It's Monday morning now, and it's time to shoot some colour on these and get these finished. Put some clear coat on it now, and then we are done with these. So there we go, subframes are now done. We're gonna leave those to dry for a few days. We're gonna leave that video here. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and please visit our sponsor, Skillshare. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.